Welcome, welcome to the Stanford Food Summit. We're so thrilled to have you all here. And I thought uh, we should start first with appreciating the people and the land um, that we are at right now. So we recognize that Stanford sits on the ancestral land of the Muwekwa, Muwekma Ohlone tribe. This land was and continues to be of great importance to the Ohlone people. Consistent with our values of community and inclusion, we have a responsibility to acknowledge, honor, and make visible the university's relationship to Native peoples. Something, as I was reading about the Ohlone people that I was thrilled to find out, um, is that they were primarily a plant-based <laughs> diet <laughs> practitioner. Um, and if you think about it, what, what's edible around here in our, in our um, natural spaces, they ate, they ate it. Um, we, let's see, what, what was in their diet? Grass and plant seeds, berries, mushrooms, shoots, bulbs, seaweed, which you'll see on our menu today, fresh greens, and acorn meal. Um, they also occasionally had um, small land animals, elk, deer, they caught salmon and trout, and uh, the women dove for abalone, apparently. So um, for 14,000 years and counting, these are some of the foods that have been eaten in this area. With that, we launch into the future of food, um, hopefully including lots of plant-based goodness. Dr. Christopher Gardner with the Plant-Based Diet Initiative. Okay, that was Lindsay Sterling, our new communication director for the Plant-Based Diet Initiative. And I'm gonna kick this off here, and I have a whirlwind of slides. Mostly it's a rotating deck of slides that'll be up during all our breaks, and we have a lot of breaks. But the background for this is in 2010, some of you sitting here might have been there when we had the first Food Summit. And we got all seven schools from Stanford to participate and some other organizations. And our, our goal was the intersection of human health and the health of the environment and how challenging that was and the complex problems required multidisciplinary solutions. And we were exhausted when we were done. And somebody said, that was fun. You should do that again. And so we did it. We did it in 2011 and 2012 and 2013 and 2014. And if you were around back then, you might have said, what happened in 2015? And we actually shifted a bit to try to be a little more practical. And we called it a food forum. And it was mostly attended by chefs, the Culinary Institute of America, and Stanford Dining. And together, we created something called the Menus of Change University Research Collaborative. And one of our breakouts this afternoon is the offspring of that. You're going to see some of the studies that have been done with that group. And then somewhere in between there, along came Ethan Brown. We worked with Ethan. He gave us some funding, and we used some of his Beyond Meat pro uh, product to do a study that we call, lovingly, Swap Meat, the study with appetizing plant food, a meat-eating alternative trial. And we published that and showed that there were some benefits to cutting back on red meat and using these plant-based alternative meats instead. And when we were done, he said, you know, Maybe we should do something bigger here. And we did a lot of negotiating. And he came up with this idea for a plant-based diet initiative that he would fund at Stanford. And we were going to look again for the optimal plants, behaviors, and strategies to displace animal products and figure out how plant-based diets could be at the intersection of human health and environmental health. I just want to clarify, and you'll see this in the rotating slide deck if you sit around, our definition of plant-based is not plant-exclusive. Vegan is not our definition. It's plant-based. It's shifting more of our diets to plants. So you should see that throughout the day. And he gave us funding through Beyond Meat to create this plant-based diet initiative. And you just heard from Lindsay Sterling that communication director position was funded by this generous donation. And we have a grant writer. And we have a postdoc. 
And then it also funds some of the salary of me, Jennifer Robinson, who's been with me since 2000 and did help with some of these food summits. So we've been around a long time and none of the money was actually to do research. It was more for the infrastructure to write grants and get more money. And I, I don't have time to bring that up, but we have brought in a bunch of money because of what was accelerated through this process. But one of the things that they proposed, or I, actually I think this was my idea, I was trying to reach out and find more people on campus doing plant-based research. And so he said, you know what, let's have twice a year a pilot and feasibility study program and we'll ask for requests and we'll give out money, not beg for money, give out money and meet new people. And you are about to meet some of the recipients of those because we have a fabulous cast of characters who've been using these funds to do pilot projects. So we decided that we needed to hold a plant-based diet symposium to highlight our fabulous recipients of the seed funding. And Lindsay came to us and said, so how big do you want this event? And we said, well, let's have, a, let's have a small little event. Let's get a little room. Let's have the speakers come. And she said, no, no, no. I'm the communication director. Go big. And we said, how big? She said, no, big. So we said, oh, how about if we rent a hall for 300 people and take the whole day? And then she said, wait, maybe not that big. Maybe there's not enough time. Um, Actually, there was enough time, and so we're welcoming you now to the 23 Stanford Food Summit, where we've had 311 pre-registrants, which you never would have guessed two months ago, right? Lindsay was actually a little panicked after she said, go big. A little hint, if you haven't seen them yet, out by the registration, there are colored little stickers. And if you want an icebreaker for the day, because we have a lot of networking breaks, this conference is really more about networking than content. We do have some excellent content, but we have a lot of breaks. And so if you want an icebreaker, out front you can put colored stickers on so that you can talk to the recipients of those who got the pilot and feasibility funding. Then at the close of that first session, we're going to have an open mic and anybody who wants can speak for one to three minutes and say, I have or I need. And the goal there is that after having said that, we'll have a 30 minute break, and during the break, you can find that person and say, I have what you need, here it is, or just mingle and have fun. So there's a half an hour break there. Then we're gonna have an incredible food as medicine presentation up here. So Lisa Goldman Rosas and Wei Ting are gonna lead a discussion with a bunch of fabulous community partners, many of whom have shown up today from across the Bay Area, and we're gonna talk about nutrition security, food insecurity, and how we address that. We're gonna have another open mic, so come find some of the staff to see if you wanna be on that second open mic. Again, just one to three minutes. We'll have a fabulously, unapologetically delicious meal. Uh, it'll be very plant-based. We do have a session on blue food, so we'll have some mussels in there. We do have Beyond Steak, which is the newest product that's coming out today as part of a salad. We're very excited about that. Um, you can't see this print, but the menu's up all around the place. Uh, it seems kind of cold, so I think you probably will get lunch and come in here, but you can spread out and go wherever you want. It's a long lunch. It's a 90-minute lunch. Although we might bring you in like at, at 125 or so to get you going, because for those of you who haven't donated your poop yet, you are gonna wanna <laughs> after, after you hear this incredible team talk about this and Sungman Park is going to talk about the smart toilet, which is coming soon. And then you won't have to take little scoops of your poop and send it in. It'll just analyze your poop on the way out. So get, yeah, I'm not kidding. I saw some open mouths out there. Get ready. <laughs> At 2.20 to 2.30, we're going to have another open mic session. So if another few people want to stand up and say, I have, I need. Followed by a half an hour break. Look at all the networking in here. Do you see all the networking? You're gonna have fun meeting and talking to people. And then we're gonna break up into five afternoon sessions. One of them is gonna be in here, Blue Food. And so I hope you've been noticing all the little dots on these. They all have their upper left corner, the color of the dot. If you want an icebreaker, go find those stickers at the registration desk. Put your Blue Food sticker on. We're gonna hear that one here in this room. At the far end of the facility, we're gonna have four other rooms set up for teaching kitchens. Oh my God, this has been going on um, for years. 
Chef Michelle, Julia, and Terry um, have been trying to raise culinary literacy in, on campus, and so it'd be really fun to hear what they're doing to raise culinary or food literacy. Here are two incredible, productive breakout products of the Menus of Change University Research Collaborative. We've been using uh, the dining halls as living laboratories. So go hear what they've been doing on campus. Huge opportunities for students, but most uniquely an opportunity for academics and chefs and dining operators to work together around behavior changes in the dining halls. We also have a fabulous reimagined hospital group. So let's, let's work on hospital food. It's already at Stanford Hospital. They've already made some incredible changes. And let's, let's accelerate it. And some of these people, we actually had two hospital food sessions back in the day. And I, I actually saw Dan Henroyd here earlier. He was here, I think, in 2011 at the Food Summit. And he came back today. Bless you, Dan, for coming back. Uh, Jesse Cool, are you out there yet? I haven't seen you yet. OK, so Jesse told me I should always have a, a cook and a farmer. So today we'll have a couple of cooks and farmers. School lunch is a hot topic right now. And so we have an incredible opportunity to do school lunch. And on the far right is Miguel Villarreal. And he was here in 2011 or 2012. So this is great fun that he's back 10 years later to be at the Food Summit again. And then a deep sigh. And we'll have some kombucha, non-alcoholic beverages, and wine and beer for those who want to stay with us. Housekeeping odds and ends here. Um, I've actually put some uh, agendas and some Wi-Fi connections on every desk. If you want to tweet about us or, or do Facebook on social media, try doing pound Stanford Food Summit 2023. Uh, we have very short introductions today because all the agendas and bio sketches are there at foodsummit.stanford.edu. So let's, let's talk. Let's spend the time talking, not introducing. So our, our introductions will be very, very brief. We do have the next round of seed funding coming up. Round four is about to take off. So please, another shameless self-promotion for this whole symposium is get more applications so we can have more colleagues in our pilot and feasibility program connected to the plant-based diet initiative. We have a sister or brother uh, organization on campus that was really initiated by RNDE, Residential Dining Enterprises. So they are having another symposium on May 25th. And they're going to have about 20 groups in a roundabout. And so if you want to look this up, please ask us or look online for the SFI taking proposals until April 7th to have another symposium on May 25th. So that's going to be in the rotating slide deck. Uh, finishing up here with thank yous, up top on the left are the three critical people, Lindsay, Jennifer, and Taylor have helped us a lot. We did have a couple snafus at the last minute. Um, Taylor uh, gave birth three days ago, and she <laughs> was not due till next week. So that was a little bit of a shock, and so she's not here to accept the accolades. But the three at the top did a ton of work. Diane, Kate, Matt, and Linda have been fabulous. And the inspiration's on the right. So Ethan Brown is here, and he is just ready to pop up and follow me. Thank you to the chefs for making an unapologetically delicious meal for us. You should be so excited about lunch, including the Beyond Steak Vietnamese salad. So get ready for that one. Thank you to my department. Thank you to my division. My division chief is here, David Marin. Thanks for showing up today. Uh, I'm sure we forgot someone, and that's always horrible. So thanks to everybody that we forgot to thank. Thank you for attending. Thanks. Thanks.